welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. Today we are going to make an actual piece of furniture. <laughs> I have been looking forward to making this project for quite some time. Mr. and Stitches and I bought the yarn for it a while back. And since we find ourselves with a little extra time on our hands at home these days, we thought making a larger project would be the perfect kind of thing to sink our teeth into. We are going to make a floor poof. This was a channel member request and it was also a project that I've kind of wanted to make for some time too, so those two things dovetail together rather nicely. This is a big thing that sits on the floor. A poof, in my opinion, is somewhere between a floor cushion and an ottoman. It's not as squishy as a floor cushion, but it's not as firm and rigid as an ottoman. Ottomans tend to be built on some kind of framework. This is made using a very stiff fabric, so you're going to want to use a nice strong cotton yarn. Uh, cotton blends are okay, like a cotton wool, but you want it to be nice and strong. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the material section. And you want to crochet as tightly as you can. So it's almost like making a really, really stiff uh, cotton rug-like fabric, because you're going to want to stuff it full of stuff. <laughs> And it's going to be working on the floor. You're going to put your feet on it, you might be sitting on it, the kids might be playing with it, the cat will be plunk plunked on it. So remember when you're choosing your yarn for this project, you want something that's a little more well, um, like strong or a bit tough, uh, something that doesn't feel nice and light and soft and silky. You want something that's going to work hard. This thing's pretty big. It's got a circumference of around 50 inches or 127 centimeters and it's pretty tall too and it's going to compress over time and we'll talk about how to stuff it a little later on in the tutorial. So let's grab our big hooks, we'll grab some nice sturdy yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a floor poof <laughs> together. <laughs> In order to make our poof, we want a nice, solid, sturdy yarn. I'm using 100% cotton. I recommend cotton for this project. If you can't get cotton, then a cotton wool blend would be good as well, because that makes it for nice and sturdy yarn. This is going to be used on the floor, so you want something nice and firm. I'm using a size 5 bulky weight yarn. If you can't get a size 5 bulky weight yarn, then you can use two strands of a size 4 medium weight yarn held together. If you have the size 5, like I do, you need 645 yards. If you're using two strands held together of a thinner weight yarn, you need 1290 yards in total, or 645 yards each. And again, I recommend 100% cotton or a cotton wool blend. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, you probably will want a measuring tape. This is a size 7 millimeter hook. If you can't get a size 7 millimeter, you can use a 6.5 millimeter. That's also known as a K or a 10 and a half in the US, a size 2 or 3 in the UK. And stuffing. You're going to want something firm and heavy for the middle of your poof. So an old blanket you don't want, maybe some old clothing you don't want, and then you want additional pillow stuffing so that you can help round out the, the sort of edges of your poof. And we're going to show you what that looks like when we get to it. Once you've got all that together, we can get started. If you really enjoy our show and you have a lot of fun with us here, then consider supporting us. You can subscribe, click the like button, share our videos with your friends, or you can purchase a pattern at our Etsy shop, or join and become a channel member. You'll find more information in the description box down below, links to our Etsy shop, and also how to join, and there's more information if you click that join button below this browser. We're going to begin with a slip knot, but we want to make our slip knot about 60 centimeters or 24 inches in from the end. We want a nice long tail left behind because we're going to use it to do a little sewing later. So you're going to make a slip knot about 60 centimeters or 24 inches in from the end, and then you're going to chain 59 to begin. Once you have 59 chains, we're going to be using the half double crochet stitch. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the next one, and half double crochet into it. I'm going to half double crochet into the top loop of all of my foundation chains. You're going to half double crochet into each chain all the way back to the beginning, and at the end of row 1, you will have 58 half double crochet stitches. At the end of row one, you'll have 58 stitches and something that looks like that. That is the half double crochet stitch. 
At the end of every row, you will chain one and turn your work. And don't forget that little tail down there. You can just keep it out of the way. The further away you get from your first row, the further that will be out of your way. We're only going to use one turning chain at the end of every row. You're going to always skip your turning chain and we're going to be using the back loops only from here on out, still using the half double crochet stitch. So we skip the first chain from the hook, find the next stitch, which is the first stitch of the row, but we're only going to use the back loop of the stitch and we're going to half double crochet into it. So there's the next stitch, there's the back loop. I'm going to half double crochet only into the back loop of that stitch. And that's what you're going to do all the way across. You're going to half double crochet into the back loops only of each stitch all the way across. You'll still have 58 stitches at the end of row two and I'll catch up with you there. At the end of row two, you should still have 58 stitches and because we worked into the back loops only of the row, that gives us a nice little ridge sort of sitting out the front. We're gonna chain one and turn. We're gonna chain one and turn at the end of every single row. We're going to continue to use the back loops only and we're still using the half double crochet stitch. So always skip the turning chain and using the back loops only, half double crochet in each stitch across. Remember to keep your stitching nice and tight. At the end of row three, you should still have 58 stitches. You're gonna have 58 stitches in every single row because we're always going to be working the back loops of each row and stitch only. You're always gonna have this nice little ridge effect sitting at the bottom of the row you just completed. So you won't see the ridge from the row before because it's going to be on the other side. So every row, the row you finish, you'll be looking at that nice ridge at the bottom. You're going to chain one and turn at the end of every row. You're always going to skip your turning chain. You're always going to work the back loops only. You're always going to use the half double crochet stitch. You're going to repeat this half double crochet in the back loops only for each stitch all the way across. Chain one turn at the end of every row for at least 75 rows or until your piece measures 50 inches or 125 centimeters long. So we're not worrying about the width so much right now. What we're talking about is the length of our piece. So 75 rows in total or until you're approximately 50 inches or 125 centimeters from the bottom edge all the way to the top. I've done 75 rows in this half double crochet in the back loops only stitch. I just pulled up on my working loop there so I can sort of show you what it looks like. It's quite long. It uh, should be around 50 inches, 127 centimeters. If it's not that long yet, you can go ahead and add a couple more rows just to give yourself a little more length, continue the same pattern, but you wanna end on an odd row. So I've got 75 rows. If you need to add a couple more rows, 77, 79, that sort of thing. Um, you should have a pretty stiff, heavy, piece of fabric because this is going to be sitting on the floor and probably being sat upon maybe your feet will be resting on it so you want it to be kind of sturdy and heavy so that's okay and now we want to create a seam so we're going to bring the two short ends together so there's my last row and here is my foundation chain row there's my long tail that was left behind on it if you didn't already chain one at the end of your last row then go ahead and chain one I'm just going to pull back up on that loop. And now I'm going to sort of turn the whole thing around. It's like maneuvering a rug at this point. It's heavy, it's long. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put my hook back in my loop here. There we go. You're going to keep that long tail that was sort of on the beginning of our foundation chain row, keep that out of the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to pair up each foundation chain so you just pull up on them and you can sort of see them as you pull up as you go all the way along you're going to grab the first foundation chain and you're still going to be using the the back loops only of your last row so that's our turning chain this little guy right here so ignore that you want the first back loop of the first stitch of that last row make sure you're using your working 
thread or your working yarn and not that long tail. And you're just going to slip stitch through both of them. Find the next foundation chain, there it is there. Grab the next back loop only of your last row and slip stitch. Try not to split your yarn. I know that can be kind of difficult sometimes with this kind of cotton. Try to keep your slip stitches from being too tight. You don't want them to be too tight. Next back loop only and foundation chain and slip stitch. And you're just going to work all the way down the edge or that seam of your poof. You'll have 58 slip stitches because you have 58 stitches in each row. Okay, so I've slip stitched up the entire seam of my poof. Looks pretty neat and tidy, and it also looks like any one of the ridges. So no matter how you have this thing situated sort of on your floor, that seam won't be terribly obvious because it follows sort of the ridged pattern we've already got going here. Pull up on that working loop, give yourself a lot of slack. We're not completely done with that end, <laughs> but we're going to concern ourselves with this other end now. We're going to close up the bottom of our poof. Okay, this is quite a large circle and we want to cinch it up as tight as we can without breaking our yarn. So we're going to do a couple of rounds of cinching. First of all, we're going to thread up that long tail we left on the beginning of our foundation chain row. And you're going to look for the ridges as you're working all the way around the bottom edge of your poof. Thread up your tail, grab the top of the loop, just run your needle through that loop that sits right before the ridge. Jump to the next ridge, find the loop that runs across the edge of the bottom of your poof right next to that next ridge. Jump to the next one, find the loop anywhere there that runs as close to that ridge as possible. So you're jumping over several stitches and you can kind of start to cinch it as you go. And because we're skipping some stitches, it'll help close in that bottom a lot quicker. So that's the first round of cinching. You're going to jump to the next ridge, find the edge loop that's right in front of it, run your needle under it, next ridge, there's a loop next to it, and you're just going to do that all the way around. Remember to cinch as you go. Remember that you want to cinch as you go. Try to keep try to keep some decent sort of tension on your yarn, but not too much. You don't want to accidentally tear it. You're not going to cinch the entire circle up on the first go, but you should get it pretty small. And of course keep sort of turning all of the fabric outwards so that you get as tight a cinch as you can. It's starting to look like a big kind of purple sea monster here. And then once you've gotten all the way around, we're going to go around again. So you're going to cinch, you're going to jump over several, I've got one more here to do, that brings me back up to the beginning. So now we're going to skip even more stitches on our second go around. So what you want to do is sort of grab an edge stitch, one that kind of sits out there's no real rhyme or reason to this. Try to pick a stitch though that's closer to the inside edge, but that maybe skips a couple of, of ridges. That's a good one there. And you're going to continue doing the same thing. You're going to be just cinching and pulling as you go. Try not to put too much pressure on that piece of yarn or yarns as you're cinching. And the nice thing about this is that down the road, if you end up with a breakage or a little bit of a, a hole developing. You can just tie it off, grab some more yarn, and then knot the yarn and continue sort of cinching up the hole. So it's an easy fix down the road if you have to do that. 
because floor poofs can take a little bit <laughs> of a rough beating. Once you've got that space as small as you can, I don't even think I could fit a coin through there, you're going to take your yarn, just double back on a couple of one or two stitches, just to sort of keep it from loosening up on you. I know we're dealing with a tight little area in here. There we go. And then you can poke your needle through to the inside. So just kind of jam it down through to the inside. Pull it out the inside, make a couple knots, and you can either leave the tail out or you can weave it in. It's your choice, but the tail won't show, so you don't have to worry about weaving in in this case. Make sure you give it a good knot on the inside, though. pretty secure. And that's the bottom. Remember, we're still not done up here on the top, so try to keep that nice working loop open. And now it's time to stuff our giant poof. We're going to need to move to the floor, and I'm going to need Mr. and Stitch's help for this. How's that? Perfect. Yeah? Okay, yep. great. Okay. So everybody, this is what I've done. So this is the inside. We're looking at the inside. I've rolled the edges of the poof down a little bit, just so you can see the bottom. I've got some, I've got some pillows. I've got old pillows that I've recovered that I'm not really using right now, so I'm going to stuff mine full of pillows. And then I have some extra pillow stuffing out of an old pillow that I'm going to be using to fill in around the sides. In order to stuff or pack things into your poof, now remember I said you could use old blankets, clothing, whatever, you want to create a tower in the center. So focus on coming up tall and sort of squishing down, but creating a center tower and then you can worry about putting extra stuffing around the sides. This, it's, it's more important to kind of concentrate on building it up really tall because over time it will compress and it will, it'll sort of get sort of rounder and a little more stout as it gets used. So we want to concentrate on going up as opposed to stuffing out. So I'm going to start by putting a really big old pillow, jamming this thing in here. <laughs> and this is great. This is a great big squishy pillow. It fits. It fits. Nice. And um, if you're going to use pillows, um, you can always give them a quick launder, especially if they're old. You can give them a quick washing first and then hang them out to dry for a few days until they're completely dry. You don't want to stuff anything wet <laughs> into your poof. Um, but that's that's a nice firm bottom. So that actually worked out well. Yeah. Um, and now I'm going to put a couple more in. And I'm going to roll up the sides as we go. Don't worry too much about like the corners. You can pinch the corners in on your old pillows um, or tuck them underneath. But remember, you're going to be putting extra stuffing around, so those little corners are going to disappear. So I think I can get another one in there. All right. Great. So I think. One big and two medium sized pillows is probably going to be enough for me because I need to be able to, to bring this all in. And this is like, you know, you can work, work at it as you go, everyone. You can stack it up and once we start closing the top, if you feel it's just too much, you can take some stuffing out, take out a pillow, maybe put some, some lighter stuffing in in its place or something smaller. Um, you know, this is, you don't, you don't have to stuff the whole thing at once and then worry about it not working. But once you've got all of that sort of like the, the pile of pillows or the pile of stuff in the center, you can start taking other stuffing, uh, like I said earlier, the, the loose stuffing. And now you want to sort of just round out the sides, anywhere in between sort of where you might have seams, um, sort of spaces between the, the pillows or whatever you've used 
as sort of your tower of stuffing in the center. And then you can just work away at that for a little while. Now that we've got it stuffed, remember, this is a, a stuffing in progress, or a sip, I guess. <laughs> um, you're going to be pressing down during the sort of cinching session. But before we do any cinching, we're going to do another row of some crochet. So you can put your hook back in that big long loop you left here. And now we're going to be doing a single crochet two together stitch. So what we want to do is we want to work across the edge. So identify your seams. Remember your seams are sort of represent two rows. And across the top just grab some edge some edge pieces. So uh, just slip your hook in any way you can underneath a, an edge loop and pick up a loop. And then before you get to your next seam Find another loop, any one you want, pick up a loop, yarn over, and we're going to single crochet two together. And then you're going to jump into the next area between seams. So grab the edge of a stitch, pull up a loop, there's my next seam, so before that, I'm going to grab that piece, pull up a loop. It does not matter what seam edges you, or what loop edges you grab, just as long as you're getting two in between your ridges. Yarn over, pull back through everything. Try to keep it as tight as you can because we are sort of cinching in the top as we go. Jump to the next space between ridges. Find a couple of likely candidates. That looks easy enough to get my hook under. Pull up a loop. Grab this one. Pull up a loop. Single crochet, nice and tight. And you're going to do that all the way around the top. Once you've single crocheted two stitches together all the way around, working in between the seams, you'll have halved the sort of the, the edge or the opening that you've got. Now you've got a couple options from here. If you can really press that, that middle section down, then you can cut yourself a two foot or a 60 centimeter long tail and start cinching in and out through these um, stitches just like we did at the bottom. That's if you can really pull this together uh, because you don't have a whole lot of stuffing in the middle of it. 
Otherwise, you can do another row of single crochet two stitches together. Try to keep your stitches nice and tight, but before you do that, take a nice sort of like good look at your poof and make sure you don't have any funny like dents, there's one right there, where you might want to add a little extra stuffing to. So just take a moment before you do any more, just to make sure that you've got all of your little, oh, there's another little dent, all of your little dents filled up. There we go. Uh, especially if you've stacked things like pillows or clothing, uh, because you want as round and as sort of smooth an outer look as possible. If you're going to do another row of single crochet, two stitches together, and I am, it just helps kind of give you a little, it closes it in a little more, it makes it a little neat and tidy. You want to continue to, um, so grab that first stitch, might look a little funny. You're going to pick up a loop in each of the next two stitches. It's a little easier now. Single crochet two together. Pull taunt after each stitch. That will help kind of pull everything together. If you can kind of pull your fabric together as you crochet, do that too. Single crochet two together. Cinch it up nice and tight. And just continue to go all the way around a second time. And then you can start to cinch it shut with just a length of yarn, but we'll get there. While you're working your way around, it helps to try and keep this part sort of squished down and it help that, that way you can kind of continue to pull the top of your poof together as you single crochet two stitches together. So you can put something really heavy here or <laughs> if you want to try a little crochet yoga, you can sort of plunk your foot in the middle and step on the middle of your poof while you crochet. So this looks, this is legit, <laughs> this is legit crochet yoga. <laughs> I finished another row of single crochet two together. I'm just putting in a little extra stuffing to just smooth out the top, that sort of edge where one pillow kind of folds into the next one. This is super squishy. And remember, as you use it, it's going to compress. So having a little extra stuffing sort of in here isn't a bad idea. A little bit more. Right there. Okay. All right. So I've done two rows of single crochet two together. I've got a space that I can pretty much fit my fingers around like that. That's big enough. Now I want to start to cinch it tight like I did with the bottom. So I'm going to cut myself at least 24 inches or 60 centimeters of yarn and I'm going to fasten off okay and then I'm going to thread that thread thread that tail back up into my yarn needle and now I'm going to do basically what I did down below, but I'm going to go sort of in one, out the other stitch, in one, out the other stitch, in one, out the other stitch, all the way around, and I'm very, very gently going to start cinching it together. And again, you might want to put something sort of heavy in the middle, or sort of squeeze, get somebody else's help, and like squeeze your edges together as you pull that string so that you can start to cinch the top shut. So as you go all the way around and you're pulling, try to keep some tension on that yarn and then you want to go around again. And of course, once you've done a second sort of pass, you can just run your needle underneath some of those exposed top stitches. And 
and kind of keep keep the pressure on that yarn and you're going to go through the next one and after you've done this a couple times it won't want to kind of spring back on you but you've got to get through this sort of <laughs> slightly awkward phase first and then we're going to worry about filling in some of the spaces So you're still cinching, you're still going around and around in circles, you're kind of picking up the top loops, sliding your hook underneath it, whatever one's easiest to grab, and you're keeping tension on that yarn as you go. And you're going to just keep going around and around and around and around and around and around until you've completely closed in that top. And of course you're doing a little bit of weaving as you go here. So that extra weaving is going to help close in any of those little gaps as well. And as soon as it doesn't want to spring back on you because you've gone around and around enough times, then we're just going to double back on our work and just make sure that that middle section is completely closed and all of these little spaces are filled up. a nice weaving effect you want to go over one post under the next one over one post under the next one just kind of keep doing that all the way around and it'll end up looking a little bit like a wicker basket Once you feel all those sort of little edge bits are nice and sort of closed in, there's no big gaping holes. I've got a few more there. I might grab a few more just before I head into the middle. You're going to bring your yarn underneath your last stitch. So if I was finished, I would tuck it in under here, come right out the middle, and then start weaving my way around these little tiny edge pieces just to gradually cinch up what's left of the top. Some of these are really tight. I'll use that one.
right, once you've got your top completely cinched shut, you just want to make yourself a little tiny knot. So try once more to get your <laughs> needle under a bit of a, a loop and make a tiny knot as small and as tight as you can. And then do it again. Maybe under one next door. There we go. And then you can just poke your needle through the fabric, bring it out somewhere nearby. Sort of pull that knot into the top. And then you can either weave the tail in or just kind of keep working your way back out and down through your poof till you get to an area that isn't quite as tight. Let's try and bring it out over here somewhere. There we go. And you can just kind of keep working it down until the whole thing has been sort of buried inside your poof. Bring it up down here. Once you feel it's in there pretty decently, if you've got anything left over, you can just trim it. There. <laughs> and there you go. One big solid floor poof. I can't wait to start using this. Mr. Stitches and I are always fighting over something to put our feet on. <laughs> And this is big enough for both of us to plunk our feet on it. And um, it's going to be a nice bit of spring decor addition to any room I want to plunk myself down in. So we hope you enjoyed making this big floor poof along with us today. And we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everyone. This is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.